Rediscover your past by digitizing your family's memories with Legacy Box. Watch until the end of this video to find out more about preserving your legacy, and then visit LegacyBox.com recollection. As kids in the 1950s, Halloween usually started with fun and crafty art projects in school. These activities would lead into decorating the house, carving pumpkins, roasting pumpkin seeds, and maybe even attending a costume party before trick-or-treating on Halloween night. Halloween parties seemed to be much more popular during the 1950s. Usually, they were small get-togethers with friends that involved games like bobbing for apples, scavenger hunts, maybe pin the tail on the donkey, or a round of ghost stories. Parties also meant eating Halloween treats, like popcorn balls, penny candies, and decorated cookies. Around the house, you may remember the orange and black crepe paper streamers twisted together and draped across the room. Paper pumpkins that would open like an accordion and be used as a centerpiece were also popular decorations, along with the many jack-o'-lanterns lighting the front stoop. The 1950s was a time when costumes were generally made by hand. Although you could buy a mask from a store, the best part of Halloween was building your own version of a cowboy, a monster, or a princess. One of the most popular costumes for boys during this period was Davy Crockett, and for girls, it may have been Cinderella. On Halloween night, you would see a glut of Roy Rogers or Hopalong Cassidy's. You might also see a ghost, which was a basic sheet with the eyes cut out, or an old lady made of a bed pillow under one of mom's house dresses with talcum powder to give her white hair. In these days, children would usually head out to trick or treat with their older siblings. As night fell, flashlights were used to check how your candy stash was growing and to navigate from house to house. Most parents stayed home and passed out candy, while the kids did the trick-or-treating alone. For much of the 50s, kids were likely to get things like candy, coins, nuts, and even whole fruit. Halloween in the 1960s wasn't much different from the previous decade. There were still no big box stores, but most of the five and dimes, like Woolworths, carried basic decorations which mainly consisted of pre-cut paper witches, ghosts, and pumpkins. Many other home decorations were still handmade, including the scarecrows you might find sitting on a porch or perched in a yard. Many costumes continued to be made by hand, but stores still carried a small selection of masks, and a Halloween costume company called Ben Cooper became famous for selling costume kits with a plastic mask and a vinyl smock, which became more and more popular as the decade wore on. You probably remember wearing one of these plastic costumes because of the distinct smell they had. Families would often celebrate the spooky holiday at a party where there were lots of games, costumes, and goodies to eat. The song The Monster Mash was a favorite in the 1960s and would often be played at Halloween events. Other fall festivities included things like haunted houses, which really became popular at the very end of the decade, especially after Disneyland opened the Haunted Mansion in 1969. What made Halloween special was the freedom of that night, along with the friends and the treats. 
The festivities would usually begin after school and consist of carving pumpkins into jack-o'-lanterns and getting dressed in your costume. The 1960s saw the popularity of pop culture costumes explode in the second half of the decade. You most certainly would have seen a member of the Beatles, a Spider-Man, or a Snow White roaming around your neighborhood. Trick-or-treating would begin at dusk, and kids would carry a paper grocery bag, a pillowcase, or even a plastic pumpkin to collect candy. In the 1960s, kids would still receive fruit, but may also get homemade cookies, full-sized candy bars, or maybe even some edible wax candies. The sweetened wax would come in the form of big red lips, vampire fangs, or even a harmonica that you could play before eating. The night would end once you made the loot back around to your house. Once home, kids would dump out their loot and pick out the best pieces to eat first. Some parents would take the candy and put it on top of the refrigerator so the kids couldn't eat too much, while other parents allowed the kids to eat as much as they wanted. Usually, all the candy would last about a week before it was either gone or picked over. By the 1970s, Halloween had become popular from coast to coast and was celebrated in just about every corner of the country. From the moment the weather started to turn a bit colder, fall activities began signaling that Halloween was fast approaching. In the week leading up to Halloween, you most likely celebrated at school with crafts, treats, and maybe even a costume parade. During the 70s, costumes had shifted primarily to store-bought kit costumes. Ben Cooper costumes still ruled supreme, and characters from popular movies, TV, and music could be found everywhere you looked. Shopping for your costume was always a treat. A trip to Kmart or Grant's might have been in order as you dug through the piles of plastic costume options searching for the best one. The 1970s saw the explosion of movie characters being licensed for costume use, and there was none bigger than the movie Star Wars, which had tons of characters to choose from. Halloween also became more popular during this time because of a shift in how we were entertained. Movies during this decade were often scary and shocking. The Exorcist, The Omen, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and finally the movie Halloween became so successful because we were all begging to be scared. This darker side of Halloween was a shift away from the wholesome fun kids had experienced in previous decades. Trick-or-treating was also becoming more supervised during this period. Urban legends about poison candy and razor blades had been circulating, along with a growing awareness of stranger danger. So you most likely would find one parent accompanying their kids around the neighborhood, while the other stayed home and passed out candy. Due to the fear of poison candy, companies began prepackaging individual pieces for Halloween. So when you got a full-sized candy bar, it was still a pretty big deal, and you would immediately assume that they must be really rich to pass out such expensive treats. The 1970s added an edge to Halloween that wasn't there before. It was kind of fun to be scared, and it made Halloween more marketable, especially to older people. Haunted houses were big during this time, and once again, it was about how terrifying they could make it.
With all of the dangers lurking around Halloween, it is a wonder we all survived. From the flammable and quite sweaty plastic costumes to the local legends that kept us up at night, Halloween during the decade of disco was exciting to say the least. For many kids growing up in the 1980s, Halloween was the highlight of the year. The decade of shoulder pads, big hair, and neon everything made it the perfect decade for Halloween. With so many more options for costumes, kids would spend hours deciding what they wanted to be. This was an era of huge pop cultural events, including the start of some of the biggest movie franchises, the birth of MTV, and the introduction of some of the most beloved mass market toys ever. So there were plenty of ideas to choose from. The 80s saw masks evolve from plastic covers with elastic strings to more realistic ones made of rubber that could instantly turn you in to Ronald Reagan. Wigs were also big during this decade, which made it easy to become a clown or a punk rocker. To collect candy, kids had basically two options, either a plastic orange pumpkin or a pillowcase. McDonald's even released plastic Happy Meals around Halloween that could be used for candy collecting. Scary movies became mainstream in the 1980s. Friday the 13th introduced us to Jason, while A Nightmare on Elm Street brought us Freddy Krueger, both of which were very popular costumes during this time. You probably also would see some Care Bears, Cabbage Patch Kids, an ALF, or even a Ghostbuster or two roaming around the neighborhood. Music was also very influential on Halloween. Not only was Michael Jackson's Thriller a huge hit, but eccentric pop stars like Madonna and Boy George made it really easy to put together a recognizable look for the night. Once you had decided what you wanted to be, there was always a school event you had to look forward to. Many schools made the day special with parades, parties, and candy, and they would let you wear your costume all day long. For many, Halloween lasted well into the night, so planning which route you would take was important. As long as you still saw a porch light on, trick-or-treating was not over. The 1980s was still a quite paranoid time, so parents would often make you wear reflective tape so you wouldn't get hit by a car. This was also the decade where stranger danger really took hold, and parents everywhere feared their kids would become sacrifices to devil worshippers that hung out in the woods so more and more parents would tag along with the kids as they made their way around the neighborhood. Then once home, they insisted on inspecting your candy to make sure it wasn't tampered with. The 1980s had so much going on that you might have also forgotten about some of the teenage Halloween pranks that would occur once it got dark. Toilet papering trees and egging houses were the most popular, and most challenging to clean up. It was also interesting to see which houses were targeted the next morning, and then thanking your lucky stars it wasn't yours. At Recollection Road, I believe preserving the past is incredibly important, and our friends at Legacy Box do too. 
So much so, they've offered my viewers a code for 55% off. In today's digital age, analog media like VHS tapes and film reels are fading, risking the loss of cherished memories due to things like mold, dust, and time. But Legacy Box, trusted by over 1.5 million families, offers a simple and safe solution to protect your memories before it's too late. With Legacy Box, you can convert your analog treasures into digital memories effortlessly. Send your VHS tapes, camcorder tapes, and pictures to Legacy Box, and like magic, receive back your originals and digital copies for easy enjoyment, sharing, and organization. And here's the kicker. For a limited time, enjoy an exclusive 55% discount at LegacyBox.com slash recollection. Don't let your memories fade. Preserve your past today with Legacy Box. Buy today to take advantage of this exclusive offer and send them in whenever you're ready. Go to LegacyBox.com slash recollection to save 55% while supplies last. Let me know in the comments if I missed anything, and make sure to check the description of this video for links to pick up a t-shirt and sign up for the newsletter. Thank you to our loyal Patreon supporters listed here. Visit patreon.com slash recollectionroad to join the club.